my dad and mum. Good morning. where our search for spinning wheels has landed us. Today, we are at a place where the popular Nigerian material Ashoke is being made. Long rows of thread are being pulled along in straight lines. This is the first stage in the making of Ashoke materials. It is called the first processing stage. More rows. These threads are different colors, orange and cream. They are held in reels or bobbins. Different colors of thread are bought from the factory before setting them in long rows during the first processing stage. different types at least any color you, you see in the market different types of silk thread are used for setting the cloth the lighter colored thread are set above the ground so they don't get dirty the brown ones are left on the ground because they don't show dirt so easily these blue threads are called passing threads and they are used for weaving they are starched so as to make the cloth firm. The second stage is the loom stage. Listen to the clacking sound. For this one now. Uh, Here is some purple thread. We call this one shatter. Yeah. We normally use it for weaving. And this small one, we call it bobbin. We spin the thread on this one and we use this one too. We put it inside this one and use this one for me. So normally we call it shatter. This one? Yes. This bitter. Normally bitter. use it for bitter. Bitter, bitter. Okay. Yeah. A design stick is used for creating different designs. After setting, the thread is passed through the net. A pulley system is used to make them open up to start weaving. After setting, we put it inside the net. This is the net. This is the pulley. We call it pulley. This one, yeah. We call it pulley. After this one, you now this is what makes it to open. So this one is rotation up and down. We use it to open so that they will start weaving. Now this is the leg press used to operate the pulley which creates an opening for the thread to pass through for weaving. Looks like this is a job for both the arms and legs. So, how long does this whole process take? Well, that depends on the design. If the design is not too difficult, we're told one person can do the job in one day. More complicated designs would need more hands or more days. And how did this Asha Oke weaver land the job? Hmm, a traditional trade, meaning that as a kid, he watched his father, who also watched his father, that's the grandfather, spinning as a kid. Mm, 
That's what I said, that is our tradition. It's from our forefathers. Lots of orange threads in very large bobbins. This one is already done. It's complete. Look at those patterns. This rolling iron is used to roll the finished product. That's the Ashoke material in this case. Now here we have the traditional spinning wheel. See him spinning the thread round and round. Mind you don't prick your finger on the spindle, otherwise you might sleep for a hundred years. Wow, look at those beautiful bright colours being woven. And listen to the clacking sound again. Long ago, in a faraway land, there lived a king and queen who held a great feast to celebrate the birth of their daughter, Aurora. The king of a nearby country and his young son, Philip, were guests at the feast. The two kings made plans for Philip and Aurora to marry on the princess's 16th birthday. Also at the celebrations were the princess's three African fairy godmothers, Felicia, Femina and Moremi. Each of them brought a special gift for the little princess. First, Felicia waved her magic wand over the baby's cradle and said, I give you the gift of beauty. Then, Femina waved her wand and said, I give you the gift of song. Finally, Moremi fluttered over to the cradle. She raised her wand and suddenly there was a crack of thunder. Maleficent, the wicked fairy, stormed in. She was furious she had not been invited to the celebrations. Stroking her pet raven, Maleficent glared at the baby princess. I also have a gift for you, she hissed. Before the sun sets on your 16th birthday, you will prick your finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. <laughs> Maleficent threw back her head and laughed wickedly. Then she disappeared in a cloud of purple smoke. Moremi gave a gentle cough. <laughs> I still have my gift for the princess. She reminded the horrified king and queen. She went over to the sleeping baby and whispered. When the spindle pricks your finger, you will not die. Instead, you will fall into an enchanted sleep. From this slumber, you shall wake when true love's kiss the spell shall break. The king was still worried about his daughter's safety. He ordered every spinning wheel in the kingdom to be burned. Then he and the queen sadly agreed to the fairy godmother's plan to protect Aurora until her 16th birthday had passed. Felicia, Femina and Moremi renamed the princess Bosede. They took her far away to a little hut in the forest. There the African fairies put away their magic wands. They disguised themselves as market women and gave Aurora a beautiful tan so that Maleficent wouldn't be able to find them. <laughs> As the years passed by, Maleficent kept searching for the princess, but she never found her. As the princess's 16th birthday drew nearer, Maleficent sent her trusted pet raven to try and find her. It was Maleficent's last chance. The morning of Bossaday's birthday came. The three African fairies sent her to collect oranges so they could prepare some birthday surprises. Bossaday was feeling carefree that day and didn't wear her disguise. After picking the oranges, Bossadé rested on the forest slope. She sang about falling in love with a handsome prince. Her friends, the animals and birds, found some clothes, a cap and a pair of shoes. They dressed up as a make-believe prince. Bossadé joined in their game, dancing and singing with them. The clothes belonged to Prince Philip, who after a long ride was resting in the forest with his horse. Philip was enchanted by the beautiful voice coming through the trees and went to find the singer. As soon as they met, Bossade and the handsome stranger fell in love. They felt sure that they had met before, once upon a dream. When it 
it was time for Basse to leave, they arranged to meet that evening at the hut in the forest. Meanwhile, the three fairies were in a terrible muddle. Fermina had baked her birthday cake, but the mixture was too runny and the cake wouldn't stand up. Felicia and Moremi had made a special gown for Basse, but it was a very funny shape. It's no use, said Moremi. We need to use magic to sort this out. I'll fetch the wands. Before they dared to use their wands, the fairies blocked up every gap in the hut. They had to stop any magic dust escaping and alerting Maleficent to their hideaway. But they forgot to block the chimney. It was so wonderful to be able to use their magic again. Felicia waved her wand and a beautiful pink gown appeared. Then Morami waved her wand and changed the gown to blue. Felicia changed it back to pink. All the time, magic dust was escaping from the chimney. Maleficent's raven was searching nearby. He saw the magic dust and decided to investigate. By the time Bossadé returned to the hut, the presents were all ready. She thanked her African fairy godmothers for the beautiful new gown and the delicious cake. This is the happiest day of my life. Then she began to tell them about the handsome stranger she had met in the woods. She planned to meet him that very evening. It's time we told Bosse the truth, said Fermina. Up on the chimney, Maleficent's raven smiled. So Bossede discovered that she was really a princess and would soon have to marry Prince Philip. Today you must return to the palace and start your new life, said Felicia. Bossede was heartbroken. She didn't want to marry a prince. She had fallen in love with the handsome stranger she had met in the forest. By now the raven had heard enough. He flapped his wings and flew away to tell his mistress that the search for Princess Aurora was finally over. As soon as darkness fell, the African fairy godmothers led Bossadé through the forest to the palace. They had no idea that Maleficent was already there, lying in wait for them. At the palace, the African fairy godmothers left Aurora in a quiet room to rest. Suddenly, a strange glowing light appeared. Aurora followed it in a trance-like state. It led her up to a winding staircase to an attic room. Inside the room was Maleficent waiting by a spinning wheel. Maleficent urged the princess to touch the spinning wheel. Aurora reached out. She pricked her finger on the spindle and fell to the floor. As soon as the African fairy godmothers found Aurora lying by the spinning wheel, they cast a sleeping spell over the entire palace. Luckily, the fairies had discovered that Prince Philip was the stranger who Bossade had fallen in love with. Only his kiss could wake her. So, while everyone was asleep, the fairies thought of a plan. They would return to the hut, find Philip and bring him back to the palace. But they were too late. Maleficent and her soldiers had trapped the prince at the hut and had captured him. Maleficent took Philip back to the castle where she threw him into her deepest dungeon. She fastened him to the wall with heavy chains and left him there to die. When the fairies didn't find Philip at the hut, they guessed Maleficent may have captured him. They quickly made their way to her castle. As soon as it was safe, the fairies magically appeared in the dungeon and freed the prince. They waved their wands and armed him with a magic shield of virtue and a sword of truth. Then the prince galloped off to the palace to rescue the princess. When Maleficent discovered that the prince had escaped, she roared with rage. She cast a spell and surrounded the palace with a forest of thorns. But Philip was able to cut his way through with his magic sword. Suddenly a huge and terrible black dragon appeared over him. The dragon laughed wickedly. <laughs> it was Maleficent. Philip held up his magic shield so that the dragon's scorching flames could not touch him. The battle had begun. The dragon soared into the air and swooped down towards Philip. The prince hurled his magic sword at the dragon. The beast crashed to the ground. Maleficent was dead. Prince Philip raced towards the palace. He quickly found the room where the sleeping beauty lay. 
As he gently kissed her, she opened her eyes. The spell was broken. The African fairy godmother's spell was broken too. All around the palace, people began to wake from their enchanted sleep. That evening, a magnificent ball was held to celebrate the wedding of Philip and Aurora. The princess, dressed in the beautiful blue gown, danced happily in the arms of her prince. As the African fairy godmothers watched over them, Felicia couldn't resist turning the blue gown back to pink. But Morami turned it back to blue, and so it went on. Pink, blue, pink, blue. Wand. Now what do we need for our magic wand? A star shape like this to trace and cut round, some scissors, card paper, straws, some glue and sticky tape. Now I've also got here some fall paper which I'm going to be wrapping around my straws later on. Also we've got some glitter here, some shiny bits and pieces, sequins and bits and pieces to decorate our magic wand with. Right, shall we get going then? Yes. Now I've got a marker pen here as well, just in case you want to try drawing a star. Now I know stars are not very easy things to draw, are they? So I'm going to attempt drawing my star here. Now if you want to attempt drawing a star, like I am, here's the way to do it. Up there, across, and down again. Now you can cut. along the outer edges of our star, like this. The same thing goes for when you trace your star with a and There's our star shape. Not bad, is it? Right, if you'd like to see that a second time, this is how we make our star. If you want to attempt drawing it yourself, 
to go up like this and down that way and up again that way and across and down diagonally to finish off now you may want to use a pencil for this and rub it out afterwards or just cover it up with your glitter then that wouldn't matter would it Okay, on your star, put glue all over, and then you just sprinkle this like this. On it. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. You can leave some more. colorful looking stars oh, ones I forgot <laughs> we're making magic ones aren't we now we are ready to stick our stars onto our straws right first of all we're going to Wind some full paper around our straw like this. Cut a long strip. There's my strip of full paper to wind around my straw like this. Okay, all the way around. You do run out of full paper. Get another little strip. Wind it all the way around your straw, like that, okay? Now, your straw is ready to be stuck onto your star, like that, okay? That's what we've got some sticky tape for. 
Right, so here are like some strips then of toilet paper to wind around your straws. You may need to get an adult to help you if you're using foil paper because it can be quite sharp. You can actually use some shiny wrapping paper. I can see some of us have glittery faces. Your magic ones all look very beautiful. Now, what are we going to do with our magic ones? Wave. You wave them, yes. And with that, from us all on story time with Auntie Nova is bye bye. bye. To produce wool for knitting or weaving, many strands are twisted together to make one long thread. Spinning was first done by hand using a spindle. Later, the spindle was attached to a wheel and wool could be spun more easily. Now, most spinning is done by machines. Keep watching Storytime with Auntie Norma. You'll have a wonderful time. God bless you. Good morning.